Lee, I don't need to say a word after all that. <laughs> Thank you deeply for that. Best introduction ever. Thank you deeply for being here today. All of you people that have shown up here, um, really, really grateful. Thank you, Maria, for all that you have done right in that rundown bus for a year and a half now. And um, if you if you haven't met Maria, please do. I, I tell people everywhere, every stop we make, if everyone met Maria, I'd be the governor. No doubt about it. So please do. She's God's gift to me. Um, I'll do a brief introduction. I'll, I'll try to be brief on this because I do want to get to questions. There's so many people here. It's so great. This is, we have been to this part of Knoxville many times since the beginning. Um, with Brian, I was telling Brian Hornback, my first time to West Knox was well before we decided to run. And I went to a little group in Shoney's and this guy was standing in the back videoing me. I made a joke with him this morning. I said, it's the first time I had a tracker since this has started. I was kind of thinking, why is this guy video and everything I say? It's before I had consultants or anything. And then the guy started to say, you need to be really careful because someone's videoing everything you say every single day. But y'all have been really gracious to me in this part of the state. And um, I'm very encouraged, so glad to be back this morning. For those who don't know me, I'm from Williamson County, grew up on a cattle farm. Maria and I still live there. Uh, I've been in the Hereford cattle business all my life. My grandfather grew, lived on that farm, and my grandson lives on that farm. <clears throat> I share that because you may not be involved in agriculture, but it's 13% of the economy in Tennessee, and the next governor needs to understand that component of our economy and recognize that it's critically important for the future of the economy of Tennessee. Um, I'm a cattle farmer and a businessman. I run Lee Company. Uh, I got a master plumber's license, got an engineering degree, now run a company of 1,200 skilled tradespeople. And Zach is right. Skilled trades are the critical piece of the future of the economy of this state. And we've ignored vocational and technical education for decades in our public school systems. And, that, and, and I'm fully aware of that because I run a company of skilled tradespeople who, a company that was chosen by the Tennessean last year as the best company to work for in Nashville among all large companies for the third time. But our company can't fill the skilled, skilled trade job openings that we have because they're not, there's not a skilled workforce out there. And that's because we've ignored the trades. And I, and I started a school 10 years ago and have put a thousand people through trade school. And we need to do that in high schools all across the state of Tennessee. And when I'm governor, we're gonna do that. We're gonna change the education system. We're gonna change the way high school looks, especially for four out of 10 kids in this state that don't go to college because they're gifted in ways that those that go to college aren't. And yet we do very little to create a pathway for success to them. And y'all all know that you know, education is not about a test score. It's about creating a child for success. And by the way, which includes civics education and character education to create children to be whole adults who know that they're privileged to grow up as an American and know the difference between right and wrong and, and, and good and bad. We can talk about education later. I'm sure there'll be questions on it. But I'm a cattleman and a businessman and I'm a guy who, in part because of a terrible tragedy in my life that I share on the campaign trail. My, my first wife was killed when I was 40. I had four little kids. I was in the middle of my career. It turned my life completely upside down, as it would. And as it probably, and as tragedy probably has in many people in this room. But I share that because it has had, that season of life had more to do with who I am as a man than any season of my life. And the Lord walked me through that season in a powerful way. And God changed my heart and my perspective forever about how to raise my kids, which I single parented for eight years, how to run my company, and what to do with the rest of my life. And I, I got, as a result of that, I got deeply involved in nonprofit work because I wanted, you know, you figure out pretty quick what matters and what doesn't. I decided what mattered to Bill Lee and what I was gonna get involved in. So I, I'll share two stories that have a lot to do with me running for governor. And y'all know this is a very unlikely thing for Bill Lee to be running for governor because I've never run for anything. 
never worked for the government, never been involved in politics of any degree, supported candidates along the way, but Republicans, by the way, 99% of the time. <laughs> we can talk about that later. Um, I've never really been, I'm a, I'm a, when people talk about being an outsider, some candidates say they're an outsider, but there's, there's, I'm, I'm a true outsider. I've never, never done this. But here's how it happened. Because of that life change, I got involved in a lot of different things that were meaningful, work, that were life-changing work. I chaired the YMCA of Middle Tennessee. They have a program called YCAP. I was in the inner city one day. I met a kid named Adam, 13 years old. And our conversation was so moving to me that I decided to get involved in his life. I started driving into one of the very worst neighborhoods in downtown Nashville. Once a week, every week, I spent one evening a week with Adam. Five years ago, we still do. Not on the campaign trail, but uh, just until lately. Adam just graduated from high school. He, was, he had an F in every subject when I met him. He was in a poor performing school, failing every subject, and I worked with his grandmother and said, let's see if we can't get Adam moved. And we moved, I moved him to another school, a public charter, where he had a completely different outcome trajectory in his education, which meant his whole life was changed. His future was changed. So I saw personally, firsthand, the life of a child powerfully impacted by a good education. And I realized, I was happy for Adam, but I found myself thinking, what about the tens of thousands of kids all across the state who do not have a good education? Because we, oh, we're in the bottom half of states in America in our education system. What about their opportunity to have a bright future? And I got passionate about that, got involved in, in public policy around education, and mostly got become engaged in the idea of making a difference in education. Because that's how we're gonna make a difference in the future of Tennessee. Uh, that's one that's one thing that got my mind thinking about running for office the second experience came because I got involved in a prison ministry called men of valor I decided to mentor a man coming out of prison once a week every week 530 in the morning for for years he's been out now for seven or eight years in that relationship I saw the life of a man changed dramatically changed and his future forever changed through a re-entry program that was vastly different than the way we do it in corrections. And I worked with an organization that had 15% return rate to prison instead of 50. Here's, here's why that matters to us. In the state of Tennessee, 95% of every man sitting in prison in jail is coming out. They'll all serve their sentence and they're all coming out into our neighborhoods. And, in the, and right now in the state of Tennessee, 50% of those will recommit a crime in our neighborhoods within the first two years and go right back to prison. And we will pay $30,000 a year to incarcerate them and their children will have a 70% chance of going to prison. And the revolving door of recidivism and the elevation in crime. Our six largest cities in the state of Tennessee last year had a higher violent crime rate than they had the year before. It, it matters to you and me what we do with people coming out of prison. Yes. And I got deeply involved in that subject, passionate about it. So what really happened to me is, I, you know, I, I was a complete outsider, a, a farmer, a businessman, a father, a husband, who got involved in, the, in three things that I think matter more than anything to most Tennesseans. Because I think people want a good job, a good school for their kid, and a safe neighborhood. That's what matters to everybody. And I found myself working through my business with public policy around job creation, public safety through my reentry program work, education work. And I, I went home to Maria and I said, you know what? I think maybe my life experiences as, a, as an executive leader running a big company, and this is the executive branch of government, maybe my life experiences have set me up to really make a difference in the three things that matter to everybody. And what if, what, what if I could... What if I could really impact people's lives for good? So we prayed about it start January 1st that year, all year. I said, we'll, we'll hear by the end of the year. I'll know. And I'm not going to do it unless I hear, but if I do, we'll do it. And we did, so we did. And we bought that old RV. We wrapped it up real nice to look nice. People go, oh, what a nice RV. I say, you should get on it. <laughs> the air conditioning doesn't work right now. How about that? I, I should know people that can fix that. That's what I do for a living. <laughs> but we started off on a remarkable journey last year. 
Um, and now we're just two and a half weeks away from the end of that journey. And I'll tell you two or three quick things we've done on the campaign trail that'll reveal a little more, more about my heart, about why we're doing this. Um, I'm a product of rural Tennessee. I, I grew up in the country and still live there. It's not so country in Williamson County anymore, but I do live on a dead end road, so it just feels country to us. But I, I'm a product of rural Tennessee. What happens in rural Tennessee matters to every Tennessean, whether they realize it or not, because our economies are so intricately connected. And when you ride in an RV to 95 counties, you figure out pretty quick, this is a rural state with some big cities. And, and most of us are doing pretty good in the big cities, but we have 15 counties in poverty as designated by the federal government, and every one of them is rural. And we can do better than that. And so we rolled out a roadmap for rural Tennessee. I took a tractor from my farm up to Mountain City, drove it 758 miles to Memphis. Maria following in a white pickup truck. <laughs> that is a dedicated and commitment wife. She had a walkie-talkie, most of the day it was like, can't you go more than 24 miles an hour? <laughs> <laughs> but but we, we had a great time and it was a fun thing to do, but it was, it was a very serious subject and something that we all need to be concerned about. So that's, that's part of my, that was part, we rolled out a roadmap for rural Tennessee last summer before anybody else started talking about how much rural Tennessee matters. And you can still find it on the website and I'm committed to rural Tennessee uh, going forward. We, we did a, so we did an RV tour, we did a, a tractor tour, this is our town hall tour. Maria and I did a faith in Tennessee tour in the spring. My faith in Jesus Christ is the most important thing in my life. That will never change. And and because of that, well, I, I also think that people of faith, the voice of faithful men and women across this country has been made to feel increasingly unwelcome, especially in the public square. That's a terrible mistake because not only is religious liberty under attack, but it's guaranteed and worth defending. And faith and family and community, those are not old fashioned values that got us here. Those are critically important values to take forward as we take Tennessee to a place where I think she can go. So we did a Faith in Tennessee tour, went to 35 faith-based nonprofits all over the state, Look at meeting with people that are doing the work that needs to be done in our, in our communities that should never be done by government. So, you know, we went to women's clinics and food banks and <coughs> folks serving disabled children and you know, organizations that work with DCS to take care of kids in interim. And we, we went to some of the most remarkable faith-based nonprofits all across the state. And, and I'm a conservative, so I don't think government's the answer to the challenges we face. I think government's the problem about half the time. And it certainly complicates business people with, you know, government makes it difficult for us to do what it is that we do. I, I, I will say this. Government has a really re good role, a really right role. That's to protect and defend liberties and freedoms and rights that are ours. That's, that's the real role of government, but not to inject itself into every aspect of our lives. And so we asked all these nonprofits, hey, does state government make it easier or more difficult for you to do what you do? And more often than not, it's difficult. That's just the opposite of the way it ought to be. That's why when I'm governor, we're gonna have an office of faith-based and community initiatives, a liaison between the government and the nonprofit community so that we can actually smooth the road for people to do the things that government cannot and should not ever be about doing. I'll, I'll, I could go on all day with why we're passionate about doing this. Those are a few of the things that reveal a little bit of my heart. I, I'll close so we can answer questions. Um, but I'll close with a couple thoughts about leadership and what I think we need in this state going forward. Um, I have a great deal of hope for this state. We, we have, we're, at, we're the envy of states in many ways. We live in a remarkable state, y'all. We really do a lot, of, I mean, our, where we are, and we can count the ways that we're fortunate to be in Tennessee. 
But we do have some serious challenges that I've laid out. But I have a great deal of hope. If you look on that bus, there's a little scripture reference on it. It says Psalm 71, 14. As for me, I will always have hope. I had some dark seasons in my life, and I, that verse was really important to me. Maria and I decided to put it on the bus to remind us every day when we get on it that there are people in this state who need hope for those three things. Good job, good schools, safe neighborhoods. Everybody doesn't have it. Until they do, I won't rest. But, but we need to remind folks there's hope for that. And we know where hope comes from. And hope is not a strategy. But, but we're developing a strategy for those three things in this state. So I'm a guy who, with great hope. But I really think the reason that we can get there is if we have the right kind of leadership. And I, I, a couple things about leadership. I do believe that executive leadership is really critically important. This is the executive branch of government. It's not legislative, it's not judicial. And I do have a life of executive leadership that's equipped me and prepared me for this job. Executive leadership is critically important for a lot, large number of reasons. I think outside leadership in this day and time, right now, is critically important. I think not being involved in government, coming from outside, not being on the inside, not being involved in lobbyists and relationships, years of donor relationships and understanding the system and being a part of that system, there's power in coming from outside government and, in, and, and creating real change where change needs to happen. Hey, we've seen that on a national level. We have a president who's one of the most effective presidents in decades. Why has he been so effective? Because he came from outside government. He's not a politician. He, doesn't, he cares more about the future of America than he does about his political career because he doesn't have one. And that's the kind of approach that can be taken when, when you're an outside leader, primarily because you're not beholden to anybody. You know, when you don't have any of that and you walk into this place, you're not beholden to anybody except for the people in this room and the people that you represent, the, the, the citizens of Tennessee. And that's who I'm beholden to. That's who I want to serve. The most powerful form of leadership is servant leadership. And I would be honored to serve you as the leader that can take this state and make it not only a better place for six and a half million people to live, but I think Tennessee can lead the nation. And Lord knows this country needs some states to lead. And I think we can do it. I'd be honored to be that leader. Thank you for being here this morning.